everybody. Hi. Hey. Scotty with the Cult Movie Cantina. I'm with just, uh, not Justina. I'm not Justina. <laughs> Can we start over? No, please? no, we're not going to start over. Look, I will to tell you why. Um, <laughs> um, you see this is empty. This is her fault. I don't know who I am. I don't know who she is. I know Justina is not here. I made him drink <laughs> absinthe. That, that happens this episode. Uh, we did the movie. Oh, what movie did we City do? Of Lo- City of Lost Children. <laughs> I don't remember what the city, city of, of lost, lost children. children. Well, Ron Perman looks like a baby. He yes. does with red there hair. There you go. And then we talked about. Um, hold on, I remember absinthe. No, well, yeah, she served absinthe. We talked about video games. We yeah. Uh, we talked about a lot of stuff about well, how weird this movie is. Yeah, but beyond that, the, look, the movie stuff is great. That's why you watch the show because we we do we do intellectual commentary on great and wonderful films. Right. But we talked however, about however, childhood however, nicknames. Right, right. We find out what Stephanie's nickname was and apparently she was an ugly child, which I cannot believe. I was. I'm bringing pictures one day. And but not going to share with us. I uh, might yeah, share it. Just, I might share it. I have to drink. You will have to watch the episode to find out where we come from. I'm a little lit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna just say that I'm a little lit. It's gonna be great. Yeah. Oh, it was great. It was great. It was great. You gotta watch this episode uh, should, to yeah. see how he got lit. <laughs> well, no, I can tell you how I got lit. <laughs> uh, absinthe. Oh wait, I thought that was empty. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. <laughs> <laughs> well, that has happened. All right. Um. Um. In English. We because it was a French film. <laughs> yeah. Oui, oui. <laughs> Bonjour. M- merci. Merci beaucoup. Beaucoup for watching a movie. <laughs> Little Crumb. Just, just terrible. Thank you so much for watching our <laughs> <a> podcast. <laughs> merci. You're listening to the Mobcast Network. Welcome to the Cult Movie Cantina. Woo! Woo! This is the podcast that looks at some of your favorite cult films as an alcoholic beverage. That's me. Shows us someone who's not seen them. She's not here today. Not here. <laughs> then we talk about it. I'm your Native American pop culture spirit guide, and I'm joined, um, Scotty, and I'm joined by, as always, your lady of libation, Stephanie, Countess Stephanie. Our uh, yeah. uh, Jellicle Jester is on assignment uh, way far away from here, so she's on vacation, so she's will not be joining us tonight. Uh, but however, we still have our our uh, peasant, our <laughs> producer Caleb over the back. Yeah, I don't I don't have any special titles, so so so. Well, I mean, oh, uh, producer Caleb's pretty special. Yeah, you know that's I mean, pretty he, good. I mean, he is but special, but not like but like, 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 compared you know, to us, we're he's not royalty. We're not royalty. royalty. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, uh, you can uh, rate and, rate and subscribe to uh, to this podcast on your favorite podcast app. I suggest Apple. Um, but seriously, rating and, and, and writing reviews does help us out, so please do that. Do it. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash uh, Cantina. You can talk to us there. Um, if you want to see our smiling faces, you can go to youtube.com slash Network and you can watch the episode that we are recording now. Yay. Uh, this episode was picked by a fan. Yes, it was. Yep. Like way before COVID. A long time ago. <laughs> I can't believe we are just now getting around to watching We it. Did just got COVID and we got busy mm-hmm. and there were other movies and it just got crazy, but it, we kept having to punt it. But finally, it's we are here and we are very French. Yep. <laughs> we, we are seeing our very first foreign film yep. on the list. Um, we have seen uh, 1995's cult classic, City of Lost Children. Indeed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, directed by Mark Caro and uh, Jean Pierre Eugenet. You did pretty good with those French names. Thank you. You're welcome. Written by Giles Adrian, Mark Caro, and Jean Pierre Eugenet. Jean Pierre Eugenet, can you do you know what his very next film was? Um, after this one. After this one. Did he do that crazy labyrinth movie? No, that's a uh, Guillermo del Toro. Mm-hmm. Okay, then I don't know. Uh, Caleb, do you know? Caleb's like looking really hard because I, I, I remember because I, while watching the I, movie, I, I will say stuff up I, like I will you. give hints and yeah. Uh-huh. Um, Ron Perlman is also in it. Okay. Uh, Dominique Pion, who played the clones in this, mm-hmm. right, is also in it. It is also the fourth of a major franchise. Oh, uh, see that. Did I not. I would say it's fourth. I think it's the last of the major franchise. Uh, aliens. Yes. Resurrection. Uh, yes. Oh yeah. That's yeah. 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 
I remember yeah. I remember the clone guy. Be I don't remember Ron Perlman yeah, in that he, movie. He's Strange part of the, the mercenaries. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's part of that. And, and the clone guy's in the wheelchair, the motorized yeah. wheelchair yeah. Yeah. in the thing. Yeah, she's I part, remember him in he's that. Part, yeah, Ron Perlman's part of that Merc crew that watched when during the scene when she cloned Sigourney flips the basketball. Right, right, oh, right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so it's her and I say one of the writers in that movie mm-hmm. and the guy who played uh, Top Hat. That, yeah. And, um, the crow was in that. <laughs> so, wow. Yeah. And so I had okay. But it was so City of Lost Children didn't do well, but it was it was kind of a critical hit and miss darling. It was like weird enough. Yeah. And so because it went on, it went to like different like to a it went on the little tour thing. Right. Like, and where, so yeah. it it did well enough for Fox to go, hey, do you want to come make an alien movie? There you go. And he was like, "I will take your American money to make an alien movie." <laughs> and wee oui, wee. Oui. You know, was uh, which was written by Josh Whedon, and then sort yeah. of quiet. Yeah. You know, and then yeah. it was uh, uh, ripped apart and turned into what we got. All right. It, speaking of uh, people who started, we have already mentioned Ron Perlman as one, mm-hmm. which I we talked a little bit during this why he wouldn't called un. Yeah, un. Un. Because that's one in French. And yeah, yeah, that didn't make sense to me, but okay. Uh, Danielle M. McFork as Crank. 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 Uh, Judith Vedette as Miette. She was adorable. Dominic Pian as the uh, Lee Sharp Dider, or also the the clones, and he, he's lots mm-hmm. of things. Jean-Claude Dreyfus as uh, Marcelo, and Odie Mallet and Muriel Mo- Mosse as the Octopus. There you go. There's all also other French people in that, but yeah. to where I'm cutting it off. <laughs> I was like, I there's a lot of French people I mean, in this. Movie. I barely can speak and English. All, I mean, you got you got all you got all the major players. Really, I did. Yeah, and to be honest, I don't know if <laughs> anybody really knows these people. So uh, <laughs> normally, in this section we would do fun facts, but our fun fact lady is in uh, on vacation, so I want to play a game. <laughs> okay, let's play a game. <laughs> it's called WTF. We just watched. <laughs> <laughs> And before I get into the sermon, I just kind of want to see your interpretations of this movie. And then I'll read the sermon. Cause, and I, I, I normally write out my sermons based okay. about mm-hmm. what I watch. I, no idea. So I went to Wiki and ripped the, the Wiki plot from this. And I want to see how close we are okay. to, to what the actual story is according to Wikipedia. Okay. But uh, whatever, whoever wants to start to play... W two F. I I think I can't play because I I read the wiki. But no, you. I mean, I can I can start because I didn't read the wiki. All right. Yeah. So let's just do that. Okay. So, to me, this movie is about a futuristic kind of post apocalyptic kind of civilization. Um, there are a lot of orphan children, and um, they, in order to survive, they are working as thieves in this little you know thieve ring that's controlled by the octopus <clears throat> who is an ex carnival person um, and there's this religious cult that uh, the Cyclops mm. and they are um, like ultra 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 fanatical and they are stealing the children but there's this other dude he's a mad scientist and he has these he apparently can't dream and he's upset by this so he has this deal with this cult that um if they steal children for him and give him the children then they will like you know give him the tech that'll help him see this mechanical way or whatever which is part of their religious cult so there's this trade going on. Meanwhile, this mad scientist who has who has a bunch of clones and and this brain in an aquarium and um, a very small lady and all this, um, they are using these children to try to, you know, come up with this way to help him dream by connecting him to the kids and getting their brain waves and all of that going on. Well, you find out that he's not the man who created all of that. There is another mad scientist, which you find out later that he's been living kind of underwater because he um, apparently was dumped off in the water and left for dead. And so, you know, he's not dead, but he lost his memory, so he's been living down there. Well, so you've got... 
this big strong man that's working at whatever local carnival freak show, whatever is going on, who has an adopted little baby brother who happens to get stolen by the Cyclops people. And he goes to find him and runs into this group of thief children and gets help from one of the girls who, weirdly enough, thinks, I think she falls in love with him, which is kind of creepy. This kind of what I got from it. But yeah, it, oh, I, got, I have thoughts. Yeah. yeah. So so there's that going on and he like, you know, stresses to her, know your little sister and all this kind of stuff. So they go on this mad adventure to find the little brother and track him down to the mad scientist. But she they both get caught and try to get killed. And this is by the octopus and her henchman. And um, anyway, so she falls into the water, and he's rescued. And so the mad scientist saves her, the one that doesn't remember who he is. But then she finds something that she releases, and he gets his memory back. And then he goes and tries to basically take out his creations and, and whatnot. All in the meantime, you've got the one and the little girl trying to rescue the baby brother, ends up rescuing all the kids, and then <laughs> the lab explodes, and that's that. All right, so here, Kyle, how close, close you were. Okay. I'd say night. I'd say pretty I, I, close. I, 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 would, I would score a B. Yeah. A B? So, a good, good B. She, she had a better understanding than yeah. I did. Okay. All right. Kronk. A highly intelligent but malicious being created by a vanished scientist is unable to dream, which causes him to age prematurely. At his lair on an abandoned oil rig, which he shares with the scientist's other creation, six chill childish clones, a dwarf named Martha, and a brain and a vat named Irvin. He uses a dream extracting machine to steal dreams from children. The children are kidnapped for him by, from a nearby port by a cyborg cult called the Cyclops, who ch he exchanges supplies with mechanical eyes and ears. Among the kidnapped is uh, Denry, the adopted little brother of Carnival Strongman One. It's played by Ron Perlman. After the carnival manager is stabbed by a mugger, one is hired by a criminal gang of orphans run by a conjoined twin pair called the Octopus to help them steal a safe. The theft is successful, but the safe is lost in the harbor when the one is distracted by seeing uh, Denry's can kidnappers. He, together with the orphans, a little girl called Miette, follows the c Cyclops and infiltrate their headquarters, but they are captured and sentenced to execution. Meanwhile, the octopus orders circus performers Marcello to return one to them. He uses his trained fleas, which inject a poison capsule that causes mindless aggression, to turn the Cyclops' guards against each other. While Marcello is rescuing one, Miette falls in the harbor and sinks, seemingly drowned, but an amnesiac diver living beneath the harbor rescues her. This is this movie. All right. See, there you go. <laughs> pretty, I'm pretty spot yeah. on so yeah. far. Miette leaves the diver... Uh, Diver's lair to find one and Marcello both drowning their sorrows in a bar. Upon seeing Miette alive, alive oh, I forgot about the bar. Your remorseful mm -hmm. Marcello lets one you have thoughts leave uh, leave with her. However, the octopus confronts them on the pier and uses Marcello's stolen fleas to turn one against Miette. A spectacular spectacular chain of events triggered by one of Miette's tears. It's the craziest Rube Goldberg machine <laughs> I've ever seen. Uh, to a sh leads to a ship crashing into the pier before one can throttle her. Marcello arrives and sets the fleas on the octopus, allowing one of Miette to escape and to continue the search for Denry. Back on Crocs, oil Craig. <laughs> Irving tricks one of the clones into releasing a plea for help in the form of a bottled dream, telling the story of what's going to happen, what is going to happen on the oil rig. It reaches one, Miette and the diver, and the later, r latter remembers that he was once the scientist who made them, and the oil rig was his laboratory before Croc and Martha attacked him and pushed him off and take it from themselves, leaving him dead in the water. They are all, they are all coverage on the rig. The divers destroy. Um, they all converge on the rig. The diver to destroy it, and the duo to rescue R R Renee. So team up. Miette is almost killed by Martha, but the diver harpoons her, and it's my favorite line in the thing. Uh, I'm allergic to steel. <laughs> <laughs> Does it hurt? Yes, I'm allergic to steel. Mm -hmm. um, she then finds Denry asleep and cranks string and extracting machine, and Irving tells her. To release him, she must use the machine, enter the dream himself, uh, herself. In the dream world, she meets Croc and me, uh, makes a deal with him to replace the boy as the source of her dream. Crank f uh, falls, fears a trap, but plays along, believing that he can be in control. 
Miette then uses her imagination to contr control the dream and turn it into an infinite loop, destroying Crank's mind. One Miette rescue all the children, while the now deranged diver loads the rig with dynamite and straps himself to one of his legs. The diver regains his senses as everyone is rowing away and pleads with the random creations to come and back and rescue him. But a seabird lands on the handle of a blasting machine, blowing them up and the rig. The end. I just got a B because I, ah. I, I was pretty, pretty. Yeah, I, I, I'd, I'd bump that. <laughs> I'd bump that. You're pretty good. Yeah. I, I, there's a lot of it. I, like, I, this movie is stunningly beautiful. Yeah. Like, except for those fleas, that that CGI is a little rough. But yeah. it's 1995. Yeah, it's but 95. even for 95. No, no, even for 95, it's great. I mean, like, look, we are we are four years from the Matrix. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, let's see, CGI in 95, what did we get? We had 94, we had Forrest Gump was probably the best thing that we had. Yeah. Uh, 92, we had, or 91, we had the the polymorph Terminator. Mm -hmm. and, and then that's it. The rest of it is like shitty CGI. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so uh, I for for what it was, ninety five. Yeah, I thought it, it was didn't great. bother me at all. Didn't bother it me. Didn't like, I didn't. It even... didn't bother me, but I just noticed it. It was yeah. one of those. Yeah, things. I didn't honestly didn't even notice it. Um, but there's a lot of um. I mean, it's a it's kind of steampunky. Yeah, it is. Um, so it the was, ideas it was are really good. Steampunky before steampunky really took off. Or what? Yeah, or did it's it? like, yeah, it's yeah, very, it's, yeah. It's, yeah, it's like just barely before steampunk really, like, became right. big. Right. So here's here's my, as someone who really enjoyed it and understood it. Yeah. Pretty, I mean, like, as it was going, it's like, I got it. I did not care for the Cyclops group because they really didn't have a purpose, no. in my opinion, because they could have had... They could have easily have made a deal with the octopus who already had a bunch of children mm -hmm. to get get the kids from her and not have to worry about the middleman of the of the which it seemed like Don, it seemed like the octopus and Kronk's group was already kind of in cahoots the way it right, came off. Right. So other than, you know, the director or the writer just saying, we need one more really weird element about this movie. Let's just throw this in here. To me, they could have just done away with the, the Cyclops altogether. Because I just thought they were stupid, personally. Other than that, it all just made sense. Um... I, I like the Cyclops. I don't think they were dumb. But I don't. I don't think they were necessary. They, yeah, that's where I am yeah, with yeah, it. I, guess, I like I the guess, idea, but they were just not necessary yeah, for the plot. Yeah, maybe that they were just out of place to me. You know, it's like mm -hmm. you know, I get this and I get this and get this, and it's like really. <laughs> I, it, like I said, it was just yeah. weird. I, I did like the the Cyclops. The head the head Cyclops guy was interrogating the one guy and was taking the. Popping the the, yep. the yeah. ox cable out of his head so he couldn't see, and then plugging his own ox cable so while he was killing him, he get to see his own death yeah. with, with the other dude's eyes, which was crazy. That was really <laughs> crazy. Yeah. Um. I like how a lot of the problem solving though for them was just like, oh, let's just make a really loud noise and then we can escape. Right. Let's talk about the relationship between <laughs> Minette and the one. Oh uh, yeah, Minette. Yeah. Yeah, Minette's yeah. really into the one. one. <laughs> it was creepy. Yeah. Right. Like she seemed number but, one, she seemed a lot more mature than her age yeah, anyway. Which is something that's brought up between her and the other kids that are part of the what, what I like to call the Oliver Twist group. The little, yeah, oh yeah, the little is, rascals. They're definitely the Oliver Twist group. They're, yeah. they're, 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 they're we're just missing an artful dodger. We're just like Yeah. That's well, it. Yeah. Um, like the octopus is Fagin, and then right. Um, it's yeah, yeah. I, w I would think in her situation, she would be. She, you know, she'd had to grow up fast. Yeah, you know, living on the street doing. Whereas know. the boys still seem very immature comparatively. And though girls mature fast, but that's boys anyway. just the thing. Yeah, right. th th we need a good smart leader, so she, she works <laughs> out. <laughs> um, but yeah, she's got this weird. Um. Uh, Tension with one, yeah. Because on top of that, one <laughs> uncomfortable also, and inappropriate. Because yeah. on top of that, one kind of has this childlike mindset. Like he's not. I don't feel like he understands everything fully. Well, he's he's simple. He's yeah. a very you know. Let's just say he's simple minded. But you know, he's got he's got this you know nature that he wants to take care. Yeah, you know, he's good. Like he's at brother. the end of the day, he's good and kind hearted. Yeah. Right. And then with her, it's like, okay, well, you're my, you, you know, basically you're my little sister now, so I'll take care of you. And mm -hmm. she did not look happy about no, that. No, no. Well, it's weird too, because like, so 
when one goes to the bar after he thinks Miette's dead, right? <laughs> the the lady who he kind of hooks up with uh-huh. kind of looks like an older Miette. And I'm like, she's got some, she favors and yeah. just like, I, it was a little weirdly on the nose for me. And so I was like, what is this guy trying to, what is, what are the storyteller trying to, to say? Yeah. Right, right. Is there something to this? I didn't, I didn't also didn't find one simple. I, 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 I didn't find him smart, but I didn't think he was like. Well, I don't mean he's yeah. like. No, no. I, he's smarter than Forrest Gump, but. Yeah. But I'm not. I'm not <laughs> I know what love is, Jenny. <laughs> but he's not a rocket scientist no. either. No, no, no. You know, he's. <laughs> he, me, he Apparently, really, none of them are rockets because they're. Yeah, they they think immediately. Oh, she fell in the water. Must be dead. Like we're not gonna look. We're not gonna dive in there to grab her. Yeah, she must but, be dead. But to be fair, I'd be like, <laughs> I'm not going in that water. <laughs> She's tied up in little. I don't think she can w- wiggle out of that. But they could have gone in. I don't know. I have a personal rule that if Did I you? can't see the bottom of the water, I'm not getting in it. <laughs> but, and also, that water is kind of gross. Yeah, it looked. Yeah. It was green at first. I was like, I didn't think that was just water. I thought, oh, they're gonna die as soon as they hit the thing. <laughs> I didn't oh. think it was just. I didn't think it was like just plain water. Right. And then she falls in and she's alive, and I'm like, oh, it's just plain water. Why don't you go in there? I don't know if it's plain water. It's, it's but but like compared, yeah. right? It ain't, it ain't it ain't the cleanest water. I see. No, <laughs> it's funky. It's, it's funky. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. As the French would say, La Funk. La Funky. La Funk. Kind of like um, uh, Mobile Bay. Kind of. Kind of. Kind of. Kind of grody. Yeah. Kind of grody. Um, I like again. I like the way it looks. I love the clone guys are funny. Mm-hmm. They are great. Now he. I love how the brain is. How Ur- Urban is kind of just. Pitting Uncle them. Irvin. Yeah. He's he's pitting them. He's like, Oh yeah, you're you're the original. You're totally the original. They were <laughs> and they he's were like and he knows up. what he's doing. No, absolutely. Okay. Like, I enjoyed the clones. Um they were great. And yeah. uh, uh Martha, the 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 mm-hmm. little little assistant, I guess she is. What the is she? The assistant and I guess she's slash uh, lover of Kronk. Is yeah. she lo- Kronk's lover? I missed yeah. that part. Yeah, she because she'd referred to him as my love. Yeah. Um, yeah. So and it seems like they well, were work- creepier. Yeah, I, I figured they were kind of a thing, and that's part of why like they were like, oh, we'll, we'll get rid of the original. The other guy. Yeah, yeah, because they were like, let's get rid of the original, and it'll just be us. Mm-hmm. Secret lovers. <laughs> that's what we are. <laughs> yeah. um, it was a it was a strange movie. Also, but what's the thing? What's up with all the Santa imagery? <laughs> like I was watching it, and my my mom comes in, and she's like. Is it take place at Christmas? I'm like, no. There's just a bunch there of Santa was imagery. A lot well, of creepy Santa imagery. <laughs> so, so I took it as this. So, so when the kids dream, dream they yeah. always they're they're always dreaming of Santa. Like that's how the movie opens. The kids yeah, have a dream. That's how it starts. Yep. And like all these Santas show up, and it's like you would think that would be great. It, but it looks like a nightmare. And then it turns into this nightmare of just like, all these Santas show up, and they're all terrible. <laughs> and so it's terrifying. Kids at a certain age, and we all remember, yeah. and, and you have children, but mm-hmm. Santa's a big deal for children. Mm-hmm. And so I think he's trying, Kronk's trying to, uh, or Crank's trying to um, tap into to, to tr- some way making the kids trust him. So who's who's more trustworthy than Santa? Well, but it keep, but he's so corrupt. Yeah, it keeps that backfire. The kid, yeah, the, like the kids can sense it. Right, and basically what it is is the machine... Whatever his to transfer the dreams doesn't work if they're nightmares. Right. Yep. So he was trying to do something lighthearted to make the kids happy. Right. So they would have a good dream yeah, instead of the And nightmares. that's why they have like the light music that they play. And then he gets upset when one of the clones messes up the music because he's children like, "That was my music." Are naturally needed. scared of men with beards anyway. That's been like proven. like little like young children also like. Yeah. Oh, when the first time you see Santa, like a lot of the times, you're scared. The yeah. first terrified. Time. It's like, who is this dude? Yeah, like, but by the time they're three, they figured it out. Yeah, but also, I imagine like, I don't think none of them were younger than three. But I also imagine yeah. in this in this future, like how many of these kids probably even know who Santa is? I mean, it's a weird situation. Here's these kids that have been kidnapped. They're you know kind of stuck in that room. They don't know what's going on. They don't really have any kind of you know, nurturing going on, and then you have this guy with a beard coming at them. Well, I I, I would say that I I would assume that the children knew who Santa is because there is a Christ in this yeah. universe. 
Because they do make the the, the, the yeah. thing about the Messiah, you know. Yeah, because they I met a Messiah underwater. Yeah, because no, the Messiah walks, walks on water. On water. <laughs> right, yeah. but but on the flip side, if these are just little orphan children, they may not have ever had a Christmas. They're little poor orphan children, yeah. theoretically. Yeah, but some kids, somebody knows about Santa. Yeah, uh, even poor orphan kids. Mm, Mia would have shared the stories. Somebody, yeah. somebody be like. Here's some Santa Claus stuff. Yeah. I don't know. It's it's weird. Yeah. Also, knows like like at the end when they when they get um um Dury, um, uh, Denry, uh the other kids are like they get younger. They're just like they're like really small children. Yeah. I'm mm-hmm. like I don't even want to deal with all that. Why why are we dealing with all these small the babies the babies? There's like lots of little babies. And that kid was so cute, Denry. Yeah, he was adorable. Yeah. With the way and like always eating. <laughs> <laughs> that was cute. Um, but. Yeah, and then they they just figure let's not worry about the carnival boss though so he's dead. We're yeah. not going to try to get his. Oh re- yeah, we're not going to try to help out his problem by getting revenge. We're just going to worry about Donry. Yeah, well, which, Donry. I, 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 which I guess goes back to one being kind hearted. He's not looking for revenge. He's just no. looking to. He save wants his, brother. his little brother. Yep. Just want to save his brother, and if he can save his brother, that's great. Yep. Um, I it's a it's a weird movie. It's um. It's a little dense, but one, I I started to, it. It took me a good half of the film to get into it. Yeah, I I and so, but but once I hit like the second act, I was kind of following. Yeah, because it. it was like because it's it throws a lot of information up front, mm-hmm. and you, there's a lot of things you have to just kind of accept about this world. Also, the the hiccup is that I'm, I'm I'm American and it's a French film, so I've got this other layer of like I've, I've got to read the subtitles for the and, and hear the French and try to make sure. Everything in this kind of clicks, right? Mm-hmm. And so it took a little while for me to get it. But then it started clicking. Then I was like, okay, I get what they're doing. It's kind of fun. Yeah. And I, I just like the world that's presented. It's a very fun, like very inter. I shouldn't say fun, but yeah, it's interesting a, world. It's an interesting, it's an interesting world. world. It's fun to watch. Yes, that's what it is. Not, I wouldn't want to be there. No, 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 no. But it's a fun to watch. Spot, huh? <laughs> and, uh, but give I up was, your sight. <laughs> and about, I mean. About 10 minutes in, I texted Scotty going, what in the world is this? And then, like, right after that. She was like, I love this fucking movie. It's like, this is great. It's like, all of a sudden, everything just made sense, and it clicked Mm -hmm. to me. And I, you know, I don't even remember reading subtitles. That's how into the film I was. And, of course, I did, because I don't speak French. But um, I loved it. I love Ron Perlman. It was so weird to see him looking like that. Yeah, like, that was what I noticed. His face was so, like. Yeah, he's so young. It's so weird. It was just so weird. I don't think he was that young in that either. No, he's, he's not because like yeah, but it looks like he's like he's twenty-two because he's only a few years away from Blade Two. Like he's not that far off from right. It. No, and but Blade Two, he and he looks so much looking. older. Yeah, well, he had the facial hair, and you know, he was just a different look for him. But here, you know, in the, in having that soft kind of. Um, yeah, only seven years old. Personality and yeah. and all of that, but I remember well. Of course, when he was in Beauty and the Beast, he was in makeup. So, yeah, right. You know, I don't think I knew really what he looked like until Blade. So when this was released, he was forty five. Because uh, yeah, he was born in fifty. Yeah. So he was your age. And then, yeah, so yeah, and so. Um, he doesn't look forty five. No, uh, he, lo- he looks I mean, so he, young. He, he looks, looks probably like in thirties, twenties, maybe twenties. Yeah, 20s. I could say twenties. Yeah, I say he's in his twenties. He looks in his twenties. And, and then I think good. the I think the red hair also helped oh, a yeah. little bit. Yeah, to make him look younger. Yeah, looks, which also was weird to me seeing him with red hair. It, it's just, yeah, I can't get over how baby faced he was. So, now the girl who played Minette. M- Minette, Miet. whatever. Min- Min- I don't speak Miet. French. Miet. Miet. I don't speak a lot French. Of, a lot of E's and Miet. T's. She was fantastic, acting yes. wise. I thought for her age, she was wonderful. In yeah, it. she actually. Um, she acted a little bit more after this film, and then she went into costuming. So she's okay. she does. Uh, she still works in costuming over in France, and so she's still in the business, but she doesn't no longer acts. Well, that's a shame. It is a shame. But you know, maybe she didn't like it. So do what you love. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, for sure. Absolutely. I want to say "miet" means like Miet. meow or cat or something. Miet. I think it. Are you gonna look it up? I'm on I, it. All right. He's on it. Inquiring minds want to know. <laughs> yeah. So. I wish we could find out why he was called the one instead of. Yeah, he said un. Yeah. Uh, so Miet means crumb. 
Crumb. crumb. Oh, that's cute. Oh, uh, yeah. That's a little crumb. A little crumb, yeah. Goes up there with Tadpole and yeah. the other weird kid names. Yeah. Little uh, crumb. Little crumb. Uh, you're a libation lady. Okay. Because this is a French film. Bonjour. <laughs> <laughs> How much French do you know? Not a lot. I have a nice brand new bottle of French absinthe oh, from you. France with the wormwood in it. And this is why I went ahead and took three glasses out. <laughs> I, I, I will. <sighs> <laughs> and champagne. You bitch. <laughs> 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 you bitch. <laughs> yes. All right. Look. 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 I. 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 I gave up drinking about a year ago, almost now, and it's like you were tempting me. Well, here's the thing: you can have a little bit, and you don't have to drink your whole glass. You know, I'll finish it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll. So, because this is your favorite. This is literally my favorite drink. Um, I chose this drink um, for two reasons: um, one, because it's your favorite. Thank you. But also, uh, I love absinthe, and I knew that it was French, and the something I had been craving because I was out of absinthe at home. So, also, uh, absinthe is known to make, you know, sometimes some people, you know, kind of see the little green, fairy. little, little green, green fairy. Yeah. And this movie was weird. <laughs> it sure so I was. figured, you know, let's have a weird drink to go with it. So. There goes the champagne. <laughs> does. I was so excited, so I, I get all my liquor. Do, do you remember what this this drink is called? Yes, Death in the Afternoon. I'm you, sorry. You missed that part. I missed you, the part. Oh, like this is called a Death in the Afternoon. I'm sorry, everybody. <laughs> uh, do you remember why? <laughs> Ernest Hemingway. Yeah, Ernest Hemingway was uh, an incredible drunk, especially <laughs> late in life. And before his suicide, he got to the point where alcohol just wasn't touching him. And so um, the rumor is, the story is, is that he drank this concoction of champagne and absinthe. And that was the only thing that could kind of um, get him going. Um, it is also called uh, Hemingway Champagne. Uh, claimed to be invented by Ernest Hemingway, and uh, and shares the name of Hemingway's book uh, *Death in the Afternoon*, which was in thirty-two. And um, the recipe was first published in *So Red the Nose* or *Breath in the Afternoon*, a nineteen thirty-five cocktail book, with contribution from famous authors. So, for the recipe, basically, it's an ounce and a half of absinthe. Please use real absinthe. Don't don't get that synthetic <laughs> crap, because you know why. Why would you do that? So, do you want Hemingway's original recipe? Yeah, his is probably more than an ounce and a half. <laughs> <laughs> Pour one jigger absinthe into a champagne glass. Add ice champagne until it tends the proper opulent milkiness. Drink three to five of these slowly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can you switch to the camera? Uh, yeah. The, the the color on this is See just... See the color change? Um, yeah. yeah. Um, this is very potent. <laughs> Yeah, this is we're not playing with this. Yeah, I'm I'm glad I'm doing another podcast. That uh, the Star Wars podcast later should be fun. <laughs> okay. oh, are you gonna come? I was gonna come to you. Also, I chose my uh, champagne glasses that have the little octopus oh, tentacles for, for because um, of the underwater scenes and yeah, the octopus the and eye. all that. Yeah, look at that. So there you go. There you go. Um, I was very excited. Uh, I get all of my liquor for the podcast at a um, kind of chill package. Right. And they have all kinds of uh, top shelf, is you know, and hard to find stuff. And in Mobile, all I've ever been able to find, absinthe-wise, is Lucid. Yeah. Which is, for me, like commercialized absinthe. Yeah. You know, so when I saw this, I'm like, oh, <laughs> Very exciting. Oh, I have to figure out what I'm celebrating today anyway. But <laughs> there cheers to everyone. Cheers. Mm. Definitely a sipping drink over there, Caleb. I know. Uh, <laughs> Caleb, you ever had absinthe? Yep, I had. I there was a birthday party for one of my friends, and we that's all we drank. Oh. And I was the last one up. <laughs> Everybody else passed out. Well. 
uh, since Justine is not here today and there's no way to close this bottle now that it's opened, you and I have to finish this bottle. Okay. <laughs> I don't even know where I'm at now. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. You got excited. I did. <laughs> uh, there's not a lot of tri- there's no a- apocrypha because yeah. the only they, the guys who made the movie made the movie and so I don't have enough and part of it's because it's foreign so there's not as much info. I do have some bar trivia though, however. Okay. Mm-hmm. So did everyone knows how like the color scheme of this movie was just a little off? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because it is it's just a little weird and so to achieve this for the actors, all the actors are made up in white face. And the color palette is corrected to turn into flesh tone. Oh. Oh. So they, they, they. That's crazy. Right. So they paint everybody in flat and then they changed it to, to make it look like flesh. And so it gives it that kind of it's weird. A, it's like almost waxy. Yeah, yeah. very waxy. That's what it, yeah, that's yeah, what it looked like. Because the, the film very much has this dream like look to it. It does. Um, the octopus are conjoined twins at the leg, but the actresses played them are not. Mm-hmm. A prosthetic third leg was designed and fitted to the actresses. But they could not walk while wearing it. This is why the Octopus Sisters do not walk in any shot of their whole body. I would have made it my mission to learn how to walk with that third leg. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, this season on, on Cult Movie Cantina, we've had a lot of movies with people getting injured. Uh, you know, Mario Brothers, right. uh, The Matrix, uh, a few others. Uh, this one is added to that list as well. During the filming, Ron Perlman was bitten by the dog uh, with the pulley, and Judith Vidette, uh, Vidette was bitten by a mouse with the magnet. <laughs> okay, I'm trying to remember the dog with the pulley. So, remember the dog? That's the uh, one so with the, the flea. No, the, yeah, the dog's got the pulley with the food on it, and so when he goes for the food, the, the, the pulley Oh, raises, that's right, the, the whole thing raises. with it. Yeah. Okay, got it. Yeah, Ron Perlman was bitten by that dog. Yeah. And the other person was bitten by the mouse. Yeah, the, me, me, yet. Me, yet. Me, yet. the mouse bit me yet. Uh, while designing the costumes for the film, Jean-Paul Gaultier was showing Jean-Paul Jeunet uh, uh, the materials and fabrics he was planning to use for the different costumes. Jeunet stopped him and informed Gaultier that um, the film's budget could not cover the cost, to which uh, Gaultier replied, Don't worry, I will pay for it. <laughs> How nice. That's my bad French right there. <laughs> Don't, we- do not worry, my friend, mon ami. I can't even. I, I'm sitting here trying to, in my head. How how can I do a French accent? It's terrible. I can't. I'm not. In my head, it sounded terrible. Right. <laughs> I just so. went with it. Um, Ron Perlman does not speak French. <laughs> <laughs> no, he learned it probably phonetically for this movie. And he was the only American on set. Yeah. But he learned all his lines and delivered them without error. In commentaries and interviews, however, he insists his French was bad. It sounded good to me. <laughs> it sounded good to me. Yeah. I mean, but yeah, they were broken sentences. A lot of it are very yeah. simple sentences, but like as a non-native, it sounded good. Oh yeah, but his it sounded really good. So that's good. I know yeah. it is, isn't yeah, it's it? So good. Um, uh, last but not least, in the DVD commentary, Ron Perlman said, "Out of everything he's done in his acting career, the scene where his character attacks me at under the influence of the octopus scissors was the one he hated the most." I can imagine. Oh, yeah. He's like, "I'm gonna beat on this baby," <laughs> and he he does beat the where shit out of her. Yeah, yeah, he just yeah beats yeah. the shit I out of her. I was kind of uncomfortable. Backhands her, and she too. goes flying. Yeah, she does. He does beat the shit out of her. I was very <laughs> uncomfortable. Um. Kayla pointed this out to me uh, yesterday, and then I went looking a little bit for it. Um, this movie mm. has a video game for PlayStation 1. You are shitting me. Nope. No, it came out in 97, and you play through the movie, basically. And here's a little bit of it. So you play me... Uh, it starts out with, like... Dari getting kidnapped from uh, with one, and the cyborgs come uh, stealing in, and then it goes into. I can't manage it. Uh, it's an old PS One game, so it loads a lot. Yeah. I'm it up a little bit. I know. I'm just cracking up because I re- I was yeah. giggling because I remember that. So yeah, so <laughs> there's the octopus. Yeah. And then you play me at. Still here, rob the cashier's heart. That's creepy. I yeah. like it. So that would be fun for an Oculus. Yeah. To kind of get into that world. Mm-hmm. I wish. 
What if for the Oculus game, though, you played as one of the Cyclopses? They don't sound very French. No, this is no, the, no, no, no. You can you can play it in English, French, Italian, or Spanish. Nice. So the, the, this, of course, is the English dub. Pallad. Pallad. Where? What's the little? Ty are they typing? Look, I need some help. I don't know. I don't know where the sound is coming from. I don't. You. You know. So yeah. What is that? That's your problem, Keith. Do it yourself. Oh yeah, I remember like when you had to open doors and like into the next scene. And then to it load. took like yeah, it took forever to load. And then we were. I, we're I used to love these games though. Yeah, we are a long way from Red Dead Redemption. <laughs> I think it's kind of backwards, though, that the game came out for PlayStation first and then MS-DOS, because that's a step back, I yeah. think. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so there you get to play it. Yep. That is so cool. So, yeah, that is the video game. I would play that. I'd play that today. <laughs> well, it's, that, it brings up something interesting, just, just as a side tangent. Um, so I listened to this podcast called... Um, Get played. It used to be called "How Does This Get Played," but they changed they changed formats this year. And one of the things they were talking about is that because legal rights issues with games, we're losing games. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. classic games that we grew up playing, you can't buy anymore, and you can't play them anymore because there's no way to play them. And realistically, these are are almost. I mean, really, they're lost works of art. Yep. Right. And so, and then a lot of these companies don't want people to emulate these games and that makes it to where it's even harder right because there's because i i under, and it's like it's a question of like i understand copyright but again if you're not going to use the property or make money off the property if you're just sitting there why is the game why why yeah. are you not letting this game be which and, and so there's a lot there's of games a specific there, company this that, one yeah. this is a game that you know you can probably get on as an emulated yeah. game I mean, you could uh, probably find it. You can't do it. I, you could probably what? find it free because a lot of DOS games nowadays, you can just find them. Right. I mean, because DOS games are a lot of uh, DOS games are some of the major lost games nowadays because people just who plays DOS, right? You know? Other than me lately, I've been playing <laughs> X Wing. Uh, nerd. nerd. <laughs> you are a nerd. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I mean, but. yeah. I wouldn't be surprised, yeah, with how hard this game would be to find. I think, do you, I re, my favorite DOS yeah. game I think remember playing was Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And this would have been in 89 or mm -hmm. 90 no, on I, a computer. Like, I remember playing that because I, I dated a guy who was a huge, huge nerd, like computer nerd and, yeah. you know. You'd have it. Yeah, I, I, I had just missed the DOS era of PC gaming, but I played a lot of PC I, games. Where, I did, too. Where, and I, a lot of mine were like point-and-click like point adventure puzzle games. I, yeah. I I had consoles, and then I got my first computer in 95. So when this movie came out, I got my first home computer. It was a compact Passario. Mm -hmm. I remember those. I had one. All one unit. Can yeah. You monitor and, yeah. And, and then the thing. I remember And um, it was not a very good gaming computer. However, I did play... Uh, a lot of Sierra yep. games and um, well, I like Quest for Glory and my first computer was the Commodore sixty four. Ooh, see, I never had okay. any of that stuff. I did in high school. Yeah, never my had any of that. My first consoles were a PS two and a Nintendo sixty four. Uh, nice. My I, I, my first console was an uh, Atari, and then I had an Atari NES, SNES, mm -hmm. and then I didn't get an Xbox. I got I got a PS one way, way late, and yeah. then Xbox way late, and then yeah. After that, I got like the next console like the year after the next console had already come out. So I had a PS three, but by then the PS four was out, and then PS four. Your nerdum both have surpassed mine right now. Oh <laughs> uh, well, I think next week I'm gonna make you play Red Dead Redemption. Yeah, so you're gonna kick that'll be fun. I'd love to. Yeah. I can't wait to see the horse poop. <laughs> Man, it's so gross. <laughs> I'm gonna it's feed. Him. I'm gonna feed the horse nasty stuff, and, and just, so he'll poop really bad. And it's just, it's, it's not just that horse. All the horses do it. Yeah, it's I just, know it's, it's gonna be great. Uh, it's terrible. I can't wait. I can't wait. Um, this movie uh, was budgeted eighteen million dollars. It's domestic. The U.S. first grossing weekend was only thirty-four thousand. It domestic U.S. It was only one point seven yeah. million total. 
It opened December 15th, 1995. Um, there are, uh, it did not make the top whatever. No, I, I didn't think so. <laughs> We're not playing that game? I'm so, kind of sad. So it, you know, it, didn't, it didn't make the list. However, there are five movies that did that okay. weekend. Uh, so can you name the top five movies of December 15th, 1995? I had just graduated high school. Toy Story. Number two. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say. I said that for Justina, Justina. so well, she's not I, here. I knew Toy Story was 95. Right. I, I didn't know Which when. is funny. I, I was pointing out earlier is, you know, with Stephanie was out of all the weeks Justina the best <laughs> is this is the 1995 year and she's not here for she's it. She's not here and that would have been fantastic. So. I'm trying okay so 1995 was the year that Jack was born. So let me think what might have come out. Pulp Fiction? 94. That was 94. Mm -hmm. Okay, but it it, it ranked uh, in the yearly because it, okay. it was late ninety four and came right. out ninety five. So, um, I don't remember. Yeah, like I did. I you took uh, the only one I, I was give thinking me a hunt. of. All right, so number give me a hint. I mean, not a hunt, but a hint. <laughs> give, me a hunt. <laughs> give me a hunt. All right, let me hunt this. And All right, hunt. Um, give me an Ethan Hunt. Number five is a terrible remake of an old forties film, I believe, starring Greg Kinnear. And Harrison Ford. Ooh. I don't know what film they were in together. It's it's a terrible it's a hey hey it's a remake that should have never been made. Yeah. I um, okay. hold okay. on. Was that um Is the film that it's a remake of considered a classic? Uh, is it is it the uh, a name of a woman is the title? Yes. Okay, I know I'm it's right there. Yeah, it's, What's the name of that woman's name? Um she may also be a teenage witch. <laughs> Sabrina. Oh, Sabrina. I remember, I remember it. Thank you. It was like, I, it was right there. It was right there. Number four is a Steve Martin sequel. Uh, which is also technically the, 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 the sequel to, of the, the this movie is is a remake. So it's a remake Pier sequel. The, um, the, um, cause it has to do with. Uh, was it Parenthood? No, Parenthood's earlier. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but good thing, you're right area. Right area. Yeah. Um, um, uh, the sequel is Hook is that um, both his wife and his daughter are pregnant. Oh, Father, <laughs> Father of the Bride. The bride. Part two, that, yeah. That's what I was thinking. I, I, I thought Father of the Bride, but I wasn't sure. Number three mm -hmm. is a Michael Mann movie. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm yeah, that sure. one's yeah. It was. It's probably the Michael Mann movie. Okay. It also is the. Um, it probably has one of the greatest diner scenes or restaurant scenes ever in any film. That is between Al Pacino and Robert De Niro, who are both technically not in the same scene. They filmed it separate times. Was that Goodfellas? No. no. Okay. No, no, no. Was it Casino? Uh, uh, Both of those heat? are Scorsese films, but good. Heat? okay. Well, heat? I'm just thinking. Heat, through. heat. Yeah. Oh, I've never seen Heat. Heat, Heat's going Heat's on the list. By the way, such I need a good. To see that. Yeah. Oh, I love gangster movies. You'll so. like Heat. Val Kilmer's also in it. Oh, nice. Yeah, okay. Yes, you you will like Heat. I will like Heat. It's the first. It's it's the first film. It's actually the second film with De Niro and and Pacino. Yeah. But it's the first film that they're both acting like, together, and there's a big scene in it yeah. where they're you know, De Niro plays uh, a criminal. Pacino's the cop after him, and they're having mm -hmm. this confrontation, conversation, and in a restaurant on a diner. Uh -huh. And they shot all of Pacino, and then he left, and they shot all De Niro, and they left. And so they're together, but they're never together in the same scene. Can I? Why? It's just I, how they I filmed guess it. Film, probably schedule conflicts. Just how they filmed it. Filmed it. But that's crazy. It's, but it's one of the most well acted scenes you'll ever yeah. seen. It's nice. So the tension is. It's it's, it's real. It's like. See. I, when you when you said you know most famous and I knew the time what year wasn't right you know restaurant scenes I'm thinking of when Harry met Sally totally. yeah <laughs> which is a little bit earlier yeah all right number one is a Robin Williams classic okay so ninety five I'm trying to think Mrs Doubtfire that's a little earlier but good mm -hmm. good good okay good, good, you're close uh, Awakenings uh, that's actually earlier okay Hook. Uh, <laughs> That's I think later. that's ninety three. You're getting closer. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Here. Um, Need another hint. Um, Goodwill yeah. Hunting. 
that's afterwards. This one, yeah. Jesus. Um, um, hold on. Robin wins his Oscar for this. This is not an Oscar winning worthy film. Uh, okay. okay, can you give me? Is a Is there hint? a sequel to this one? There are two sequels to this. Jumanji. 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 Okay. Jumanji. Yeah, that was in my head, and I wanted to confirm it with one more hint. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, the top five movies of 1995. The year. The year. The year. Okay. Uh, one of them, and only one of them, we have mentioned before in the previous segment. Toy Story. Toy, Toy Story. Story is number three. Okay. So, um, Pulp Fiction. <laughs> I'm thinking because it was later. Yeah, because yeah, no, so, Pulp Fiction was 94, but it was in the end of 94. Yeah. And it, it ranked in 95, but it didn't rank in the top five. Okay. Like That's what I was saying. It might have ranked. So, but um, good, good, good guess there. Hmm. Uh, let me think what else came out. And uh, let's see. You want to go from? Let's do from five. Yeah. On yes. So yeah. Uh, n- number five is a Jim Carrey sequel. The Mask too. No, 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 no. Son of the Mask was in the 2000s. And also not Jim Carrey. It, yeah. That's okay. uh, Jamie Kennedy's in Jamie there. Jamie Kennedy, yep. Okay, well, it was terrible anyway. Um, oh, um, uh, what's the one where he's a, a pet, Is it pet detective? Is Ventura? Ace Ventura 2, when yeah. nature calls. Yeah. 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 Uh, number four is a Disney movie. Let me just back up for a minute. How <laughs> sad is that year when something like... Ace Ventura is in the top five, but it was huge. <laughs> like both yeah. of those at that are time, like at monsters. That like at that time, Ace Ventura was such a big right. Yeah. But like, you look it at was it part now, of the like pop culture. Really stuff. I mean, it was. I mean, okay. I mean, Carrie had that big run. I mean, was Ace Ventura, that, Liar Liar, yeah. and yeah, yeah, it was like during that time, all of his films were like so quotable that that it was just that right. All right. A all Disney re- movie. Yeah, I remember um, Ace Ventura. Those him bending over and talking with his asshole. Yeah, <laughs> 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 trying to remember because it was. All right, so um, ni- uh, n- uh, trying to remember f- what Disney film not- came out ninety four is a Disney movie with a Disney princess. Aladdin, ninety two. Yeah. Okay. That's, yeah. Mulan, ninety seven. Golly, I'm right. I need to. What's the and, one in the middle? Then? And then like there was um, Pocahontas. Yes. yes. There you go. Pocahontas. Yes. Pocahontas. And number three is Toy Story. Yes. Right. Number four is a Tom Hanks classic. It um. He was also nominated for this one, which for best actor, it is his third in a row nomination, and the first one he lost in in that run. So he won for Philadelphia, and then right. he won, wins for Forrest Gump the following year. He's nominated for this movie for and, and thought he was going to win his third, but he did not. Hmm. It's a Ron Howard film. Okay. Yeah, it's not Castaway, is it? No, Castaway. Yeah. That's, that's way later. later. Yeah, that's 2000. That's way, I know. I'm like. What did he do that was a good movie? Has has lot. probably one of the biggest catchphrases of the '90s. I'm trying to think. Hold on. <laughs> and that's story. Oh my God. Okay, hold on, Tom Hanks. So it was after Forrest. Yeah, Bill Paxton's in this film as well. Oh, it's the um, uh, Apollo 13. Apollo yeah. 13. Houston, we have a no problem. problem. <laughs> yeah. And last, but certainly not least, <laughs> is um. Hold on, I'm gonna make sure I get this right. It is the third? Yes, yeah, the third of this franchise. It stars Val Kilmer. Oh. Um I know. Has I think it's Is um, it Batman Forever? It is Batman Forever. Oh, there you go. I was about to say that I think the soundtrack is better than the movie. The soundtrack is good. I have well, this, that's where Kiss from a Rose comes yeah, from. Yeah, I have this yeah, I actually Kiss have I actually have the soundtrack. The soundtrack's good. This is a good soundtrack. Yeah. Um Val Kilmer hated being in this movie. Oh, How no. can you imagine? Uh, hated it. I am upset. At one, it has one of the best deleted scenes that would have built on the Bruce Wayne character so well. It's well, the it's uh-huh. the nightmare scene where with the giant bat. Oh, um, there's a nightmare scene with a giant bat where it's like just Schumacher was like, I need a giant bat. Well, it's, <laughs> and it's supposed to like build on like Val, like Val Kilmer Batman's like fears and stuff, and yeah. it, it would have been great character development, but they just I guess they scrapped and it. And that's he got so irritated with all of that because. You know, he's very much into acting. He mm-hmm. wants to be, he's a very, the acting is what's so very important to him. And he said that once you put the suit on, A, you can't move in it. No, it's, it's, it's like he said it yeah, was that's been so a problem. terribly that was a problem uncomfortable. From the beginning. You can't move in it. And then B, you're, you're covered. And so you can't 
you can't act. I mean, it's like it's basically you're delivering lines in a costume, and he yeah. hated it. And anything that required, you know, anytime he was out of the suit as Bruce Wayne, they kept cutting that kind of stuff, yep. and it just pissed him off. Yep. I just saw because they didn't solve the they didn't solve the the costume problem until Batman Begins of like the neck. They didn't solve that problem till then. Yeah. Basically, you're doing this. You know, yeah, it's and because like, and even Michael Keaton complained about that same issue, like, yeah. and now and now it's mostly CGI anyway. So yeah, there's there's a suit, but you know, I can just do it with dots. But at the yeah. same, I think that's a pro and a con because you know you lose the physical of the suit, but it's a pro because now you can move, do, move and, and do what and you need to do right. your stuff. So um, speaking about Kilmer, I saw on AMC Plus, and mm-hmm. I gotta watch it. But um, the documentary about the making of uh, Doctor uh, Moreau. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Um, oh that. <laughs> he talks a lot about that in his Val documentary. Right. That, that film is so. Oh. So what I had heard is that the direct the original <laughs> what, I, what I had been told the original director was fired. Yep. And then he ran off into the woods yep. and just hung around quietly sneaking on set to watch things. Yeah. And I'm like, so this documentary covers everything. Brando's a mess. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, because Brando was the, there was a lot of drama with the first director and Brando. And and the fact that Brando just didn't show up to film until, Oh, yeah, a lot of the scenes you see with him and his little, and his little whatever you call it. Yeah. What what were those things called? Um, There's a word for it. They talk about it in the yeah. um, Boba Fett all the, the time. Litter? The litter, litter. Yes, yeah. when he's carried around in his litter, there's several scenes when there. That's not Brando. That's someone else. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. yeah he, because he showed up late to he, set, or, oh, or wouldn't show up at all. And yeah. like Val Kilmer was a huge Brando fan until this movie. Absolutely. And it was one of those is yeah. like you know, oh, you don't want right, to meet your so heroes. Brando being as brilliant as he is is a terrible human being. <laughs> yeah. And so my, my favorite my favorite one is this is that uh, Apocalypse Now. <laughs> so. They, they, you want more, Caleb? Uh, yeah, just a little uh, bit. They get him for Apocalypse Now, and he shows up. He's overweight, so they have to show to shoot him in shadows. He doesn't know his lines. So there's literally scenes where he's talking to Martin Sheen, and Martin Sheen has his lines taped, you don't to, want taped to him. Uh, yeah, yeah, you need this. Yeah, yeah, you'll need to cut it. Yeah. You'll need to cut it. So, um, yeah, so there's, there's literally his lines taped to his chest. So he's reading his lines from Martin Sheen's chest <laughs> and still knocking it out of the park. I mean, yeah. even reading them, it's still Brando being awesome. That, yeah, but. <sighs> yeah. So I, I really he was just lazy. He, That's yeah, what it like was. After he would have been even. I mean, yeah, because after. I forget what. Like, the God without the Godfather, I think his career would have slowly died. Yeah, the Godfather kind of picked him back up. Cause, Top cause, movie, nineteen seventy-two. Yeah, because a lot of people were starting to realize his be- like people were realizing his onset behavior and realizing the kind of guy he was, and they didn't want to work with him. And then Godfather comes around, and that kind of saves him. And he and he actually kind of behaves himself on the set of the Godfather. He's not a dick on that one. No. And then he gets you know gets the Oscar nom or the win. And I just got a brilliant idea for my upcoming. Monumental birthday in May. We should have a Godfather party, a gangster party. Everybody has to come as That'd gangsters, dressing up as a horse head. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually one of my favorite um, Xbox 360 games. The, oh yeah, the, the video game is so good. Because because in the video game, you you play a character who basically does all of Michael Corleone's yeah. dirty work. Basically nice. all the so, all the background stuff in the film, that's your character. That's you. So like you're the one who goes and kills the the horse. You're the one who sneaks there's a mission of you sneaking the horse egg and putting yeah. in putting in the producer's bed. There is a um, the end during the baptism scene, it's right. it, the missions you you killing everybody. You killing everybody. So now when I watch the Godfather, I'm like, that was me. I did all that. I'm yeah. gonna didn't shoot that guy. I shot that guy. I, I, I shot it. That's me. I did yeah, all I had to drive around real quick, so all around New York, and I, yeah. I want henchmen. That's what I want. Wouldn't that be great? And that was all, well. That was another good fun part about that game is that you would get as you got better you would get to hire people and be like okay you follow me around and while we drive around so and stuff. so confession the this the the godfather was the first game i spent real cash on like you know like 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 real money on fake stuff right real yeah. money on fake stuff cause, on extra stuff because now you know y'all bought the game right. but then there's there's it's you know ea made it so EA's yeah. like 
It's also fun fact. Brando's last performance. Yeah, was in that video, <laughs> video game. It was in that video game. Yeah, but um, because they used the archive audio for a lot of it, and then well, no, they used everybody except uh, they got everyone back except um. Uh, Pacino. Pacino, they couldn't get back. That's and right. Yeah. And, and they, they asked couldn't him, even. They couldn't even get his uh, his visual. They had to just get. No, no, he he's fine. But Pacino, the reason why Pacino didn't do it was he said he didn't sound like Michael anymore. Yeah, and it's true. He didn't sound like no. Michael anymore. He didn't sound like yeah. seventy two Michael. But anymore. they but they also couldn't. I think there was also an issue getting the rights to ha- his look as well because you have to you know buy the the visual rights when you do video uh, games. If I'm not buying, if I, if I don't get, if I'm not getting Pacino for his voice, I'm not buying his, lo- right, his lightness rights anyway. Yeah. yeah. But he gets, they get Hagen and, and yeah. Sonny and, uh, um, Vito and so yeah. it's it's fun to it's fun it's fun, awesome. it's, it's fun. Um, and why be so like uppity about not, it, I would be like, hell yeah, use my likeness for the movie, uh, for the video game. I That'd think it was cool. a cost thing. I, I, I honestly, I don't even know if I would charge a lot for it. I mean, I'm like, I think it would be cool to have my face all yeah. over the video games. D- there is Do that. it. Yeah. It's like, and why it's, not? It's something, I already the, have to, it's something the fans appreciate because fans love Well, when the thing that is, Al Pacino doesn't need the money, so it's not hurting anything. It's a, it's, it's a Godfather video game. Just let him I use mean, your face. Yeah, I mean, it's the man who was willing to let Adam Sandler make a coffee pun out of his name so right that's what i'm saying <laughs> I, uh, come on now but i spent real money to buy the, the, the best henchman in the game you have to pay for yeah and so i bought him early and so me and my henchman just went over just laid waste in new york city it was great <laughs> okay so here's my thing if i ever make it big and you make a video game out of me i will be reasonable at my cost so you know <laughs> I'm not yeah. going to keep you Her guys. Her famous last words. <laughs> I'm, seri- I'm serious. Oh, no, 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 yeah. I respect that. I respect that. I'm going to be double my price. <laughs> I'm going to be re- very reasonable. Which I want everybody like to bucks. play my character. <laughs> everybody can be Stephanie, mm, every- the lady of libations. <laughs> lady of libations. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone can be the lady of libations. It'd be great. That'd be awesome. Yeah, it would be awesome. Yeah. Uh, you, this Because uh, everything right now in my life revolves around Red Dead Redemption yeah. 2. <laughs> Which um, I want to play now. The, there's alcohol in the game. Yeah. <laughs> Is there now? Yeah. yeah there's, there's actually an entire scene that it's very important. Yeah, but there's a uh, alcohol's a, a there's a, mone- a mechanic called dead eye that allows you to slow time and you can sh- like target your guns and shoot people and so it looks like right. it's like bullet time for 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 the Matrix. Right. Um, to fuel that, you fuel that with alcohol. <laughs> nice. So basically, you get drunk and you shoot up people. Oh, I love that. So. Um, so two weeks, my husband and I have made a, uh, an agreement, a bet. I I don't know if it's a bet or agreement. (laughs) We did this last night that we are going starting tomorrow, two weeks with no sugar. We're just cutting out sugar, not bread, not carbs per se, but sugar. So, you know, sodas, which I don't drink Mm -hmm. anyway, but Jamie does, um, um, uh, flavored creamers in your coffee, my Starbucks because it has sugar. Right. You know, st- anything that has sugar in it, which means no wine for me, which is what I drink most of most of the evenings. Which means no rum for Jamie because it has sugar yep. in it. So I probably will not be drinking for the next two weeks because my options are limited. Mm-hmm. You know, I could do like vodka and soda or whatever. Why? Because he, so he has read some, he's been on this health kick, and he's read this about cutting out sugar, blah, 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 and it's one of those, well, I bet you can't do it, oh, I bet you can't do it. No, it's one of those no, things. No, sugar's terrible, trust me, I know. Yeah. So it, it, that's how it started, with a, you, know, you can't cut how, out sugar, however, you can't cut out however, sugar, so we're both cutting out sugar for two weeks. Sugar's like a drug, though, so it's like, it's yeah. it's, it's it's not wise to cut sugar, it's it's wise to taper it off. Yeah. So and, if you've and been also tapering the, it off, like, but since you just did this yesterday, you haven't been tapering off, so you're going to have a million miserable two weeks yep yeah so when we podcast next sunday we'll have to you talk about how bad it there's is. gonna be like she you're gonna have like headaches and you're gonna be grouchy i'm, and I'm gonna make just gonna make cookies it'd be great <laughs> oh god you're an asshole <laughs> you're the one who brought the death of me after also me. what does that mean for your drinks are we just gonna not have wine then? um well next week is a cult meeting, is a cult well, yeah. meeting so yeah so that's at least one week where you don't have to worry sunday, about it yeah you know by the by the evening it'll be okay okay um because so 
Art Walk. So she timed this out pretty good. Art Walk <laughs> is Friday, and I always go with Angela. And, you know, we always start at Post and do happy hour at Post, and I we drink Prosecco. I can't do that. I'll have to drink, like, vodka and water or vodka and soda, which is no fun, which means I'll probably have a drink just, you know, socially while she's drinking Prosecco, and I'll be like, okay, I don't want this, so let's just move on. It's going to be sad. It's going to be so sad. Shots. I could do shots, like, of just vodka (laughs) or whiskey. I could probably do whiskey. I just can't do, like, rums. The fun. No mixers. The good drinks. No good drinks. I don't do a lot of sweet drinks per se, but my my drink of choice at home in the evenings is I like red wine. You know, just to wind mm-hmm. down with red wine. And well, Kayla's the f- fruity drink king. Yeah, so yeah, he likes it. Well, so I mean, my my husband is too. Yeah, he so. likes the fruity yeah. drinks too. <laughs> but I'm glad you like my death in the afternoon. Yeah, it's really good. Well, it's good, but it's not necessarily super sweet. No. Um, but I'm okay good. with that because I've had absinthe before, and I think absinthe's all right. I do, too. I drink it traditionally with the sugar cube and the the whole thing. I drink it like a man. I drink it straight or in, or with champagne, and that's it. Yeah. I don't need no damn sugar cube. <laughs> oh, but you do the whole thing, so it won't turn this color unless I you... I don't care. <laughs> I like it with the champagne. I just want it straight. It's delicious. <laughs> it's delicious. It's delicious. I it love it. It is delicious. Yes, that's why I knew you would have one. Mm. I'm like, Scotty's gonna want one of these. So this is my first drink of 2022. Was it that was a death in the afternoon? So that's not a bad thing. Not a bad thing at all. You had some scotch, you know, not too long ago when yep. you got when you became a Scottish a, lord. A, a Scotch I, I, lord. Can I become a Scottish, a Scottish lord? lord. But we call it Scotch lord <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah, right. Yeah. So and you know to celebrate that, I have not. Well, you are the Countess of Frankenberry. Um, it's not Frankenberry. <laughs> she is the Countess of Frankenberry. It's Falkenstein. Sure, Frankenberry. All Falkenstein. Right. I, I heard so Frankenberry. Who's the Countess of Chocula then? <laughs> Justina should I'm be I'm going to whip Frank- all y'all's asses oh, in a minute. Oh, that's it. So, she, so Justina's going to be the Countess of Chocula. <laughs> <and> <laughs> Frankenberry. Frankenberry. I hate you right now. No, nope, you love us. It's Falkenstein. Uh, Frank- Frankenberry. <laughs> if I have to be Scotch Lord, you have to be the Countess of Frankenberry. <laughs> Scotch Lord is way cooler sounding, though. <laughs> we don't pick these roles; they just fall. They just happen. Us. Just ha- they fall upon us. <laughs> they just fall upon us. Uh, it's like nicknames; you don't get to choose them. I never had a nickname. I never had one either. Scotch Lord is not a bad. Did you ever nickname growing up? Uh, yes. Would you like to know what it is? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> of course. <laughs> My uncle gave me this, and then, therefore, all my cousins gave it to me, and then it leaked into the school because I went to school with some of my cousins when I was younger. This is elementary school. Stephanie stop sign because they said I was so ugly I could stop traffic. Ooh. Ooh. Yes. That's not going to give a kid a complex. (laughs) It was awful. Oh, I did. I I mean, it was awful. I I can imagine. Awful. Stop sucking. And my asshole uncle started that as a joke. Stephanie Stop Sign. Terrible, terrible joke. So, I that. And then Lucy um, was a nickname. Oh, how'd you get Lucy? Lucy, because my father said I acted like Lucy from Peanuts, and so he used to call me Lucy. Uh, Ah, I can see you're with the Mm -hmm. psychiatric. (laughs) Uh, lemonade stand. How about Kayla's, you? Uh, I had no nicknames. Uh, the reason why I didn't have a nickname because everyone think, assumes my name is a nickname anyway. I mean, uh, yeah, because it's yeah, it's Scotty. Scotty. Yeah. And so everyone. Call, so I had the opposite. I had growing up, everyone tried to call me. You Scott. didn't have any bad like t like t- like a Stephanie stop sign kind no, of name. No, no, you know, mm-hmm. and these there's easy like Scotty Potty's like right there, but <laughs> it's n- nothing. But they didn't they didn't do it. No one, none of the kids did it. Yeah, uh, I did, but I. Throughout my life, have had the opposite problem mm. of people just trying to call me Scott. Yeah. yeah. I have my hash name, I, too, which technically is a yeah. nickname. And people still call me by my hash right. name. Like, yeah. That only know me from that, I, that group. I guess right. I guess now I have a nickname because I tried to get CJ going for a while when I was CJ? younger. Yeah, because my middle name is Joseph. So oh, Caleb Joseph. So nice. CJ. CJ, okay. Uh, and that's kind of worked now, now that like social media handles exist. Yeah. And, right. Like, so like Twitch... People call me CJ more than they okay. call me my actual name because so, it's easier to type. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. But see, I I I tend to call people about how they're introduced to me. That's that's me. And yeah. So so you introduced yourself to me when we met. Yep. As Caleb. So you just went. And Caleb. now you're producer Caleb. Right. I like Caleb though. I like yeah. that name. So it's very Star Warsy. 
Yeah. It, it well, is. It is now, especially. You're right. It's like I'm saying, it's very Star Wars. Yeah. yeah. I like it. It's my favorite For Jedi. a while, I only had the character that got killed by Bane, and now I've got a, <laughs> a Jedi. So. Right, so now you got a Jedi, so it works out. <sighs> um, yeah, no, no nicknames for me. At all, ever? Ever. So, Scotch Lord. No, Scotch Lord was kind of my first. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's not a bad... No, it's, it's, not, not, it's not a bad one. It, it won't give you a complex like Stephanie Stop Sign did. <laughs> I terrible. can tell you that right that now. Terrible. That I know, it was awful. Terrible. And I was an ugly kid. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I've, oh, seen picture, I've seen little pictures of you. Oh, no. I, there's a... You got I will face. privately show you some some pictures of my, my really... Like, you know, everybody, I guess... You know how butterflies kind of <laughs> <laughs> are, are butterfly. first as larva, yeah, and then they go into this chrysalis and they become this beautiful butterfly. Well, I had a very bad larva stage. <laughs> <laughs> I but I'll I have to show you pictures because it's, it's weird because I have seen you have some of the most adorable baby pictures. Baby, I was cute. So what happened is, <laughs> I when I was, it was the house. What, what happened? Was, <laughs> no, I had um. Okay. What happened? You know this is making the clip, right? Yeah, this is the this clip. Is fine. This is the clip that everyone's seeing Tuesday. So this is so this is what made me really really ugly. I well number one, I have I had to wear glasses from a very young age. Um, not my baby pictures, but so I had these glasses, and in the early '80s, all the glasses were like mm-hmm. like these ginormous, and I had really 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 bad eyesight, so they were very thick period they were thick and as a child so I'm wearing these glasses and I had this before this one particular time I had this really long blonde beautiful hair as a kid and at one point my dad loved my hair and my dad would even like after my shower he'd be the one that would comb it out for me i mean he loved my hundred times well yeah, i mean because it would get <laughs> knotted and mm-hmm. whatever so but he'd be the it's one that, that would spend the time and and comb it out and whatever well my mom and my dad got into an argument one time i don't know what it was but my mother got pissed off at my father and to spite him she took me and had my hair cut. And when I say cut, oh Jesus, oh, no. was it like a your hairstyle? Oh. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, like oh. literally, I had the boys. Oh, so you were like short. you were coming back from a little affair. So yeah, <laughs> so cut it all where oh. I had like super short and and the feather. It was so awful. get yeah, this butch do with yes with, with these with giant these big giant. Yeah. I look like okay yeah. the chick from um. Um, Stranger Things. No, oh, Barb. 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 Yeah, the bar- the Barb but bear. I was younger, but I looked like, like Barb. A little Barb. I would look like a little Barb. No lie, I would probably pick on you too. It was a- <laughs> awful. And then, and and then to top it off, my mother would dress me in stuff like Hawaiian shirts. Oh, no. <laughs> I swear to God. So, okay. Uh, so, so. <laughs> I have a picture. Please of- let me be able to share this. <laughs> Uh, the picture? Yes. <laughs> I don't know since, if you will ever let you share the picture. So we're 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 cuz we're all friends here. I don't yeah. know if I'll ever let you share the picture. I will show you the picture and then when you see it you'll be like, "Oh, I can't do this to you." I, I guarantee it. It's that bad. I don't know. I, mean, I don't know all, if it's <laughs> that bad. We're all talking about I think I'll I find think, it though and you'll and you'll see it. But there's a picture of me like somewhere wearing a Hawaiian shirt, like a school picture with the glasses and the short hair. And then I don't mean to laugh at you, but good god. Yeah. <laughs> you were so nice. <laughs> it was so bad, guys. It was so bad. I mean, and so I was teased relentlessly. I mean, like for so long. Like I was bullied, mm-hmm. teased. Oh, it was I, awful. Yeah. So I, anyway. I remember my third grade school pictures. Um we um this was the year our the year before for our school had burned down. Oh shit! And so we were in um, going to school in churches in the neighborhood. That's scary. And so they drove us. They they bust us over to the what was left of the main building to do our f- class photos right. or class you know, our, our individual pictures. And you know, I dressed up and I looked nice. And I was so proud of w- what I thought was my smile and everything at the time. <laughs> and Bless I you. I felt and this is me at third grade, so I was eight. I thought I th- I felt and I quote presidential. <laughs> 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 My third grade self said presidential. Okay. Then I got the picture back. 
you know, a month later or yeah. whatever. And so, yeah, I'm smiling, but my lips are kind of curled up, like, onto my teeth. <laughs> and so I'm like this, <laughs> <laughs> this kind of, like, this poor child was born, like, in the woods and doesn't understand human oh beings. Oh, my God. Like, I can't like, wait. Like, to- it's, it's like, like, he's never smiled before. This is his moment. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. But, I, felt I can't wait to show you my Stranger Things Barb picture. I felt Just so wait. presidential, and then that showed back up, and I was like, maybe maybe I'm not running for president. That's <laughs> okay. How about you, Caleb? Any awkward phases? Um, My whole life. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm still in the awkward phase. I mean, I'm currently, I need to find a new uh, hairstylist because I'm starting to get that mullet look, and yeah. it's not great. Party in the back. Yeah. Party in the back. No, yeah. Business in the front, baby. Well, you got those pretty curls, though. You can like that's that's the problem, though. I don't like my curls. They get they they get too much to handle after a certain point. And no, I, just, I think if you put enough product in them and just let that stuff go, I don't you like could product, be sexy though. like Jason Momoa with his curls. I guess. You know, you got <laughs> to You just got to. You just have to put product in it so it doesn't get frizzy. You yeah. know, so you just kind of enhance your curls instead of yeah. like, you know. This is the hair care awesome. portion of the cult movie. <laughs> I'm serious. Yeah. He, I like the curls. Yeah. Right. Girls like the curls. Yeah. I didn't really have curls. I had waves. I don't, my hair was wavy at, at, at times. You've got some thick hair. I do. I've got some thick hair. Holy yeah. crap, you got some thick <laughs> hair. Uh, it's, you know, my favorite thing in the mornings now is like Facebook. Facebook will be like, here's Facebook memories. And... They show me stuff like when you had your long hair, my long ass hair when I was in college, and just like the just obscenely long ass hair. I loved Scotty's long hair. It was. I want him to grow it back, and he won't. No, it's it's. It it's, was amazing. It, it was a time. It was amazing. It was a time. It was amazing. I I thoroughly enjoyed it myself, but it was a it was a time long gone. Ah. Uh, um. So let yours grow, Caleb, and put some product in it. <laughs> It'll be great. Since I can't do it, she yeah. can't you do, do it. it. I guess I should try. I need I need to see some long curly wavy hair like Jason Momoa. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry they called you Stephanie Stop Sign. Yeah, I would that's I, w- terrible. I would like to be big enough to say that I wouldn't probably do that in school, but I know me. <laughs> you, you totally would have joined in. Uh, I, <laughs> you would have been that asshole. Yeah, because I was an asshole. I, because I was picked on, so you you know when there's someone else to be picked on, yep. you join in because it takes the target off you. Absolutely, it's absolutely. So, it's so funny because people ask me now, like you know, because later this is when I was younger, so later I took up martial arts and boxing, and and I'm just generally aggressive sometimes. And like people ask, why did what got you into that? And it's like, let me tell you, <laughs> um, I I. I was the quote unquote crazy kid in school. I threw fits mm-hmm. and because I had anger issues. Yeah, you did. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I was terrible in school, and um, but again to deflect, we had a we had a girl who was very lovely, and there was nothing wrong with her. But her last name was Sewell, and so we just kept calling her Sewer. And, oh. and, 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 like the fourth grade, terrible, terrible to her. I, Kids yeah. are terrible, Man. Kid, yeah. but yeah. It's like it's 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 funny. That's how we learn to be human beings at first by being a terrible one. And you have to kind of learn to deal with stuff like that. It, it really, I mean, it, I had a I really really hard few years. Those mm-hmm. were really hard years for me. But I mean, it teaches you to like deal with shit. I guess right, <laughs> you know, yeah. which is what I did. I hope she's better for it. But but God. I was. <laughs> I was a sm- what made it worse is I was like a very intelligent kid, so I was nerdy. T- of what was considered yeah. nerdy? Yeah, you're, yeah, you're a smart kid. So it was, it was, it was pretty like, rough. Yeah, because even if you're not into what's considered nerdy things, if you were smart, that was it. So by the time I got into high school, like so, you know, middle school and well. From the fifth grade through the eighth grade, my parents made me be in the band, and they made mm-hmm. you know. Would you play? Uh, clarinet. I hated it. So. It's like a long no, never mind. Anyway, I, <laughs> That's yeah, the it's talking. so bad. It was so, <laughs> I went through a really I hard period because I could. <laughs> but by the time I got into high school, I, you know, was allowed finally to explore who I was, mm. which was, um, I went through a I, like I shaved a side of my head. I went through a punk period. I tried, went through a metal period. I went through anything but like nerdy. Even though I was in all AP classes, still, you know, making making the grades, but my my look, you know, I made sure it was 
anything. Caleb, did they still have AP stuff when you were in high school? Uh, yes, AP. I actually took uh, AP science at one point. Oh, nice. You. I avoided AP classes like the play. All my classes were AP. I took AP um, history. Eng- well, the big ones: AP history, English, and science, all the way through high school. Oh, I didn't take any of that stuff. I yeah. was like, that seems like a lot of work. It really <laughs> it wasn't. Is. I didn't think it was. See, that's just the difference with me. It was yeah. easy to me. Right. Um, I, my problem so. in high school was I was too creative to, to care about like education. I was I was like I'd, I'd just write stories all day. I oh, was yeah I got in trouble for drawing a lot and I got in trouble for stuff. talking a lot. That was my big you? thing. Yes. <laughs> you, yes, passing notes and talking. Yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, it was bad. Uh. It, and I drank a lot in high school, which was I mean I did. I mean I had a lot of um, uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for. Death in the afternoons. Um, um, Self, uh, yeah, when you're, self-esteem issues. Uh, (laughs) You know, based on all the other stuff. Yeah, I I, I had a lot, I've always had a lot of self-esteem issues. And by the time I was in high school, I was, I mean, I was drinking a good bit. I'm not going to lie. So if I had, and I still may. I still made like super good grades and like in AP classes. So I always wonder what could I have achieved had I not started so, drinking. So it's funny. Um, I didn't drink. Um, my 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 whole thing was uh, D and D, and I was, I played that too. Yeah. You know, so high I, so I, I did nothing but D and D in high school and was terrible at, at high school. So <laughs> I didn't do any I drugs didn't. until I was in college. Yeah, I, I didn't do any drugs. I, I haven't done any drugs, college. but didn't drink until my twenty first birthday. And I didn't get to do D and D until uh, college. So Aww. my twenty first birthday rolled by, and I went, <laughs> "That's cute." Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, See, I mean, I, I didn't, like, again, yeah, I wasn't drinking on my twenty first birthday, so what a thing. My mom oh, oh. was the one that used to let me have throw parties. I was the the in high school. Yeah. I did everything I could to be the cool kid because of all the other past issues. So I would have parties at my house, and my mom would let me have alcohol. With my kid, my friends. Uh, so I'll share this story, and then we'll go because we were running yeah. a little yeah. long. Yeah, I'm sorry, episode. but um, I will share this because um, it is not about the t- 21st birthday, but it's about an 18th birthday, which wasn't mine. I have a friend who I will, who will remain nameless, or uh, a high school friend. Uh, uh-huh. uh, I haven't seen him in a, a very long time, but we hung out a lot in high school, and he turned 18 before I did, and so I was hanging out at his house on his 18th birthday. And what we decided to do for his 18th birthday was drive to. Um, Fairhope, no Daphne, Alabama, because we lived in we were baby. Mm-hmm. So we drive to Daphne to buy him his very first Playboy. Oh, nice! Uh, and so we had to go and find a gas station that had what that yeah. had applied Playboy. <laughs> but we bought him a Playboy. I magnet. didn't know that was hard to find back in the day. Yeah, we couldn't find him, and so we had to find a Playboy at this gas station. And that you know he had, to, but he was yeah. so proud to show his ID. To get his Playboy, because yeah. you know you could buy Playboy. I had a similar 18th birthday experience. My, I had a friend um, that I was really good, really good friends with back in the day. He was a little bit older than me, like a few months, and her parents owned a um, greyhound farm, so the racetrack was right. a big mm-hmm. deal. Like, so for my 18th birthday. Um, they all took me to the racetrack where I could legally bet. Oh, okay. And, like, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And then afterwards, they threw me a surprise party at Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> <laughs> For the people who weren't 18 and couldn't get into the oh, racetrack. Yeah, so adorable. it was great. But it, just as a joke. But, but it was to, fun. So, so, side note, to this day, uh-huh. when I drive through Daphne and I see see that gas station, you I'm think like, of the Playboy? it's the Playboy gas station. <laughs> That's so funny. I didn't see, as a, a, as a female who didn't buy... Playboy, I didn't know you had to be 18 for that. Had to be 18 to buy yep. pornography. Now you can get it for free on the on web. The web. Yay for the internet. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> uh, I think that's a great note to end the show on. <laughs> there you go. Um, uh, I, first of all, I want to thank you for the Death in the Afternoons. I will also apologize for the next show, which will actually air before this one. Um, I don't know how I'm going to get through my Star Wars life. You'll be fine. <laughs> I've got two. You've only had one. Yeah, and I'm, I'm lit. Yeah, I'm, I'm Which is I'm, crazy I'm, I'm is lit how fast on the these first hit. One. Um, be careful of these audience because, yeah. oh my God. Oh my God. Very dangerous. Uh, there's something I say. Oh, yes. This is Scotty <laughs> saying this is our contribution to the multiverse. Go out and make yours. Bye. Yay.